I want to end now with one section on Reverend New Fuller's unpopularity with his ethnic community and draw some parallels. That unpopularity, I, I, I subtitle, is a necessary price for holding to principles and integrity. Now, I would like to go back to Father Power's observation that Reverend Nicola displayed great courage and wisdom in sticking to his principles despite his resulting unpopularity with large sections of his own indigenous Fijian community. We will now know that so also unpopular with the ethnic community were persons like Reverend Jastaki Kure and Amalia Rokiti Ibuna, who similarly had the courage of their convictions to go against the bulk of their community. Now, in contrast, Indo-Fijians who opposed the coups in 87 and 2000, we were popular with our communities. As the general perception then was, and there was a realism there too, that the Indo-Fijian community and leaders were being discriminated against by those coups. But it's in this 2006 coup, which has driven home to me how difficult it must have been for the principal positions taken by Reverend Paula Nikula, Reverend Koroi, and Amelia Rokutibuna. Today's Indo-Fijians who publicly oppose the 2006 military coup can vouch that they are viewed with great suspicion and frequently get a cold shoulder from many in the Indo-Fijian community and even from former schoolmates and friends. Many pro-coup Indo-Fijians genuinely believe in the military government's off-stated rhetoric of racial equality, an attitude reinforced by the Fiji Labour Party's joining in the military government in 2007. It is important to put this in some perspective. The Indo-Fijian population has been gutted, intellectually gutted by the emigration of the vast majority, dare I say more than 90% of their most educated people. A large group of the remaining Indo-Fijians have been led by a Fiji Labour Party leadership that has completely discarded its historical attachment to law and order in favour of a short-sighted support of a military coup which gives only a few Indo-Fijian elites, including FLP stalwarts, the enjoyment of short-term power and benefits. Yet the masses of the poorest Indo-Fijians are further impoverished by the 2006 coup and will suffer even more with this attempted abrogation of the 1997 contribution. It is fortunate indeed that the other Indo-Fijian party, the NFP, has been steadfast in its support of constitutionality and law and order. And I do not say that because for three years I was in the NFP in the mid-90s. I left it after 1999, never ever to return to politics. It is said that local business leaders, largely Indo-Fijians, but also Chinese, Europeans, and other ethnicities, have shown little inclination to publicly support constitutional law and order. On the contrary, their active and secretive support of every military coup in Fiji, including that of 2006, has sustained the coup plotters to the detriment of the average law-abiding business community. There is little likelihood that these business leaders will ever actively cooperate with wages councils to ensure any movement towards just wages in Fiji. It may be noted that, that the postponement of the 2009 WROs by the military government drew only perfunctory criticism from the Fiji Labour Party. How ironic to find the Fiji Labour Party and the business community on the same side supporting a military coup which has caused such great harm to the poorest, poorest people of this country, including the lowest paid wage earners covered by the wages councils. The blind Fiji Labour Party support of the 2006 military coup cannot be good for Fijians, Indo-Fijians in the long run. It cannot be even labelled as merely politics because it is simply atrocious politics. Indo-Fijians are currently only about 36% of the population and the proportion will fall to about 25% within 10 years while the Fijians will rise to about 70%. The Fiji military forces will continue to be 99% Fijian. It is inconceivable to any political scientist that Komodo Benimarama and the military council hierarchy can forever exclude the mainstream Fijian political party and its leaders from governance of Fiji as they are currently doing. It's extremely likely that in the not too distant future, for their own preservation, the Fijian military hierarchy will rejoin and support the body politic of the indigenous Fijians. Only time will tell whether the current leadership of the Fiji Labour Party and the Indo-Fijian business community are safeguarding the interests of future generations of Indo-Fijians or utterly destroying them. It can also be noted that many of the Indo-Fijian elites currently here to enjoy the benefits, the power and the glory resulting from the 2006 military coup are former citizens, some embittered by racism of previous coups and driven away over the last two decades. Some have tried with obvious futility to justify their recent roles in Fiji as an attempt to look after the interests of Indo-Fijians remaining here. Whatever happens, these former Fiji citizens have no long-term stake in Fiji except for the emotional attachments. They will certainly not be here to share this country's tragic burdens in the coming years.